Hello everyone and welcome back to part 3 of this perfect shell experiment where we take a look at Boston United. Now last time we left off they had been promoted from League 1 into the Championship. We'd move forward a further two years in time. Four consecutive promotions for Boston now. We haven't changed any of their facilities yet, any of their reputation or finances. Everything's still exactly where it was. But we are going to go forward two more years, see if they can make it into the Premier League. Um, and then I think we'll also do a two more years than that because I think last time it was a little bit short. So let's go forward straight ahead now, see if they're in the Premiership or if they're still in the Championship and what effect everything is having on the club as a whole. Well, we are now two years in the future and just going to go through their two seasons, beginning with um, last season, their first season in the Championship, and they actually got off to a very good start, beating Norwich, Crewe, Barnsley and Fulham before being held by Newcastle, um, and then became a little bit inconsistent, wins, draws, defeats, three wins on the bounce and then some more draws and defeats, really patchy form, just not quite achieving the level that they would normally expect to, getting beaten by Bournemouth in the FA Cup as well, out by Derby in the EFL. Cup, no progress in the cup competitions, but their first disappointing season as a club. We've never seen them struggle like that, and it means they certainly did not get promoted. So if we take a look at the following season, they were still in the championship and actually got knocked out in the first round of the EFL Cup, losing their first uh, three of their first four championship games were finally, finally getting their act together. Um, there was another loss in there and a few more draws and defeats as well. Um, and then some terrible defeats. Five de defeats across seven games, including at ho away from home against Chelsea, 1-0 in the FA Cup. But their form seemed a little bit better and they did make the playoffs, getting beaten by Hull home and away to keep them in the championship for another year. So if we have a look at the championship table um, and look at it by stages drop back to that first season they finished seventh that year just outside of the playoffs by five goals and the team that beat them too it actually got promoted Norwich going up they really weren't that far off just seven points off the automatic promotion place it's very unfortunate not to go up the likes of Everton Newcastle Sunderland all down in this league Middlesbrough down there as well um, the year after that they finished fourth four points off the top two Everton Newcastle and Sunderland all at the top Hull and Middlesbrough in there as well elite company there that's a lot of former Premier League teams in and about the right places uh funny to see villa getting relegated down to league one um but it looks like they're still competing but they're really not at the level i thought they'd be at after a couple of years i expected them really to be challenging in the premier league so i can't believe they've not managed to get there yet if we have a look at their transfer history and drop back two seasons to that first season they didn't bring anybody in that would be why they were struggling they didn't sign a single player after just a couple of frees before that they didn't bring a single player in uh, 27 and a half million pounds leaving the club as well is never going to help them Paul Curtis going to Stoke, the big loss. Um, if we have a look at him, he was a Boston regen as well. Um, so that's a huge loss to the team, and it must be their financial difficulties. The year after that, though, they really did go out and spend an awful lot of money. Something must have freed up for them. Bringing in a couple of United players, Greg Davis, Phil Jones, Drinkwater, Reese James coming in as well, Cavaliero from Wolves, a lot of players coming in, and that's where they were able to push a bit closer to... Um, the top couple of positions. Now, Bed Woodburn has gone to Arsenal. That really won't have helped them because he was a big player for the team. £44.5 million. They turned a big profit on him. Um, but that really would have hurt them. As would Danny Ings leaving. A lack of goals there. Really not doing them any favours. Um, but there's an interesting transfer policy going on. If we have a look at the club details, reputation really dropping down now. That's not special at all. Um, their facilities... Also now 18, 19 dropping down a little bit, um, but their finances looking a little bit better, but they don't have a sugar daddy anymore. So I'm just wondering if we have a look at the landmarks sort of screen, and we can see they've had these sort of positions where they moved to the new stadium. Um, stadium capacity increased a little bit. Uh, and then it increased even further. But David Newton scales down his funding and then a new chairman led by Ed Balls, um, the former Labour Party shadow chancellor, 
coming in to take over the club, obviously leaving Norwich to become the chairman here. That's quite funny to see. Um, but he has taken over the club and it looks like funding has sort of been a little bit different since he came in. They have spent a lot of money last season. You have to hope they will spend a lot of money again uh, this season. But I'm not sure whether to give them improved resources or not at this point. I'm not sure there's anything else worth taking a quick look at just yet. It's all about whether they get out of this league or not. I think we should go forward two years. I might decide to give them a bit of money. Um, but for now, let's go forward two years and see how they're getting on. Well, I did decide to give Boston the extra transfer money and also give them a boost in reputation. Their facilities all went up to 20 as well. We basically did what we did last time. I don't give them as much money as last time. It was more about the reputation and facilities, but it seems to have had an effect in the championship. A very good start to life back down there. A few draws in there, but mostly unbeaten. Just a defeat to Wolves. Getting through in the EFL Cup against Southampton as well and beating West Ham in there. So you can see the team really stepping up going out to Derby in the quarterfinal a bit of a surprise there and a really poor patch of form here that could have damaged them in the long term they did recover a little bit but it was so patchy going out on penalties in the FA Cup and really not recovering in the championship um, let's have a quick look at where they finished that season well, as you can see, they did finish in second place, managing to get promoted three points clear of Norwich in third, who also went up and missing out on the championship title. But the main thing is that they did manage to get promoted that season. And if we look at their first season in the Premier League, we'll see that it's really not gone that well so far. Um, some very disappointing performances in there. Going out of the EFL Cup to Leicester, a lot of draws and defeats. Four defeats on the bounce here against teams that they really should be doing better against. That's a long time with only one win. Um, and then their form did recover somewhat. They managed to get back into it, beating Oxford in the FA Cup. And then another run of three defeats, going out to Southampton in the FA Cup. But a few more wins coming in around the right time of the season. At the end, they really struggled again. If we have a look at the Premier League table, we'll see that they did finish finish in 10th place which is a little bit surprising I thought they did a lot worse than that based on those fixtures but they actually finished in the top half alongside Derby Stoke and West Brom on 47 points not far outside the bigger teams there which is quite interesting if we have a look at the club we'll see that Joachim Lowe is now the manager um, they brought in the new manager they've had quite a few managers actually uh, they had Adam Murray for four years 281 days before he left the club um, then Sam Allardyce came in, he got sacked, Philip Koku came in and got sacked and now they've got Joachim Lowe as a Premier League team. If we have a look at their transfer screen for this season and last season, a lot of players going out there, some on loan but some for cash. The year before that was the year they spent the £87 million, pounds, um, bringing in a lot of players Phil Jones, we've already taken a look at a lot of those. Um, the year before that, obviously nothing really going on. Um, I'm surprised they didn't sign more players in the Premier League. You can see I put their reputation back up to 10,000, so I was expecting a bit more. The club attendance also has increased naturally. Um, their finances, not too bad. There's enough money there to bring some players in. Their facilities also now nearly a 20,000-seater stadium. Youth facilities have also dropped down a bit, but I'm not sure why they haven't signed players this season maybe they're still to come you can see they have started to spend a bit of money ahead of the new season um 53 million pounds being spent Declan Brooks coming in a few Everton players coming in Jack Grealish coming in as well um but a bit interesting they've still got this worldwide reputation I think they will go on to better things Joachim Lowe will start spending money um and hopefully the club will start to bounce up the leagues a bit there is just one other thing I want to take a look at that's a short list if we go and take a look at the homegrown status um, and trained at club Boston um, then we can see there's a lot of players here with a lot of valuation. Ben Woodburn right at the top of the pile. An England player with nine caps and 36 goals. 
currently at Arsenal. Paul Curtis, that region, the famous Boston region with 19 finishing, now at Stoke, where he's been doing brilliantly. 15 goals this season, 17 last season, 13 the year before that. Um, a huge loss to the club to have let him go in so cheaply as well. Josh Whittle, another one, 21 years old. He is another Boston graduate and regen coming in on the left flank. Looks like a decent player. Uh, ben Brereton or Brer- Brereton, um, the player that came through from Stoke and they did sign him early on before letting him go. He's now at Fulham. John Jeffs still at the club, 19 years old. Looks like he might be getting a bit of game time. Played 19 games in the Championship, 22 in the Premier League. Not bad for another regen. So you can see that their youth facility is really starting to do the job. Concert, a pre-existing player. Andre Green from at Brighton now, 25 years old, not a region, but there are a couple of players in there. I mean, Paul Curtis is a big one. 19 finishing, 16 first touch. He is an incredible player. Um, and alongside Ben Woodburn, they could have been a deadly partnership, but they both now left the club. So we have to hope that some of their other youngsters towards the bottom here will develop into the next big thing. But their regions should be the thing that carries them through if they can maintain their position as a Premier League club. But that is going to be it for this episode let me know if you want me to keep going forward on this i feel like we are starting to hit a bit of a wall unless we give them ridiculous cash um ridiculous reputation that sort of thing but Joachim Lowe coming in as a manager shows the difference a reputation makes to the club um so i think we will go forward again at some point but let me know in the comments if you are interested in that or not drop a like on the video if you want to see more make sure to subscribe as well to get all the latest football manager experiments but until next time see ya